Hey, it's your open source advocate, and I wanted to do a short video this week. Um, it's on a tool called Wavemon, so I like to give you guys these utilities, especially for the people that are doing IT work, uh, especially those working at home now, and you're trying to do some home IT work maybe. Maybe you're not an IT professional, but you're somebody who's having to do IT work at home, make your network better, make things run better because you're having to work from home. I hope that many of you are getting to work from home right now, and if you're not, I hope you're finding ways to improve your skills so that you can maybe do some computer repair stuff on the side. And I say computer repair, but really remote help desk stuff, right? You have a whole community around you that might be needing help with these kind of things. And if you understand these tools and you can put this stuff into practice, you can do a lot of things as a remote help desk person. And there's remote help tools out there. Um, I've done Mesh Central in the past where you could get access to someone's machine that way. If you set up a Mesh Central server, um, there's there's tools out there like AnyDesk and TeamViewer and GoToAssist and so many others that are closed source, but they serve the purpose that you need today. I wish there was a really great open source option um, that gave you the kind of features those do where it's really have that person install the software and give you a code to allow you access. It, it feels a little bit safer to do it that way, right? But um, sometimes those tools aren't available and I understand that, but I really hope everyone's doing well while all this... Uh, uh, stuff's going on in the world where we have to be a little bit remote and a little bit distant from each other. So today I wanted to give you a tool that I've been using to do a different set of videos that I'll be presenting for you guys later on. Uh, but this tool is called WaveMon. So Wave Monitor basically is what it's talking about and it's an incurses based system. So if you don't know what incurses is, um, if you open up a terminal based shell, so usually Bash shell on Linux or Unix, um, Windows, if you get into, I think, PowerShell, and then, of course, you can use the Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL. Then they also have this type terminal where it's a bash terminal. Um, I'm not sure that the command line command can do incurses, but I, I don't know for sure. But for sure, on uh, Ubuntu and other Linux-based systems, you get the, the bash shell. So incurses is kind of that. It's, it's almost a graphical user interface in the terminal. Uh, sometimes Incurses even has mouse capabilities. It's a little bit odd. It looks like the old DOS shell. If you're if you're old enough to remember that or even know what I'm talking about, um, then you'll remember that as you moved the mouse, it was very blocky, but it moved around on the screen and you could do things. So Wavemon is basically something that lets you look for different Wi-Fi signals uh, around you and monitor those things. So there's Android apps that do this today, and they'll show you all kinds of good information about it. Um, there are, um, as far as I've found, no iOS applications that will do this except the Apple built-in airport utility uh, iOS app. So you can get that from the App Store, and it's really meant for using it with their airport base stations. But if you go into your settings after you install it, you can actually turn on a feature that allows iOS to do this as well. But, um, you know, taking a, a laptop outside and doing some testing and things like that, you can kind of figure out what is your signal strength for your Wi-Fi. Um, if you're trying to do this around your house even, this is a good thing to do. So if you ever, if you have a single Wi-Fi base station or maybe you have a repeater somewhere, you're trying to figure out where you might need a, a mesh node or something like that, um, you basically want to use a tool like this and you grab your laptop and you would basically open up a terminal shell just like this. And you're going to do, just first of all to install it, so on a, on a Debian based system it's sudo apt install wavemon, just like that. It's not going to work uh, because I've already got it installed. It's going to tell me it's already installed, which is okay. But if you don't, you can just run that, and it'll install that onto your Debian-based system. If you have um, Fedora, I think you can just do DNF install Wavemon. You might have to do sudo. I can't remember. Um, if you have um, Arch, it's probably pacman-s install, you know, that kind of thing. If you're using Manjaro, I think they have a nice... Uh, uh, app center that maybe you can get it from there you may have to do it through the command line as well this is a really easy way to install this so you get it installed and then to run it you literally do wavemon and you want to do this as a super user so do sudo wavemon unless you're logged in as a root user already um, and this is what you're going to get so right off the bat you kind of see statistics about the network that you're connected to um, so this kind of shows you right now what I've got going. So I've got link quality, which I'm in the same room as one of my Wi-Fi base stations. Um, so I have a mesh network, and it's so so you can see I've got excellent link quality. Um, 
So signal level minus 45 dB. So if you're wondering about the signal levels, the way I understand it is basically 40 to 70 decibels is acceptable kind of signal level. So that's what you're looking for. Um, it'd be nice to have something a little bit further over here, but I've got a pretty decent signal level here. Um, if you get up uh, 70 to 100, you're starting to look at not quite so good at connectivity, but you'll be it'll be usable. Um, you know, actually, probably yeah, 70 to 100. Then above 100, you're just it's probably going to be really cruddy. You're you're going to have just more issues getting anything to work than you than anything else. So at that point, it'd be better to drop off the Wi-Fi and try to use cellular or try to get on a different Wi-Fi network, that kind of thing. So that would be some things you could look at for your own home Wi-Fi is, first of all, just what do the signal levels look like as you move around your house and you see it's refreshing on its own. So you pick up your laptop, start walking around, start looking at how does it, how does it fluctuate. And if you have a certain area of the house, maybe your kid's room, maybe the office that you're using temporarily while all this stuff in the world's going on and it suddenly drops way down here and your decibel level goes up, um, you know, goes lower actually, which is minus, lower, so it would be minus 85. That's a signal that maybe that's a place to put an AP repeater, an access point repeater, or a node for a mesh network and to really improve that signal again. So this is kind of part one when it first loads up. This is your dashboard for the, for the wireless that you're connected to. So it's got some great information right here on the first page. Then you've got these keys down here where it tells you what all else you can see. So you can see there's some F keys that give you different information. So there are options out here, uh, but first let's just look at a couple of things. So if we do F2, that's the histogram. So I'm going to go up here and hit F2 on the keyboard. And you can see my histogram of what's going on from my Wi-Fi network, which is basically here's the signal and here's what it looks like and you can kind of see down here it tells you what the blocks mean and what the dashes mean and things like that and you can kind of see the different signal information so to go back you just hit F1 and you go back to your main page there now F3 is the one that I want to see because that says scan so not only do you need to know information about your own Wi-Fi network but if you're in a fairly congested area maybe a, a neighborhood or maybe you're in an apartment complex uh, things like that where there could be lots of Wi-Fi signals around. There's some other information that you could use to improve your signal capability. So you hit F3 and when F3 comes up it's going to start scanning for different Wi-Fi signals. So this is going to show a, a lot of Wi-Fi signals in my area here in just a minute. And you can see, so there's a bunch. So I know mine. This is mine, the Mac GNG, Mac GNG Guest. So you can see I have different uh, places where I've got information because I've got different nodes that are coming up. But out here, this is kind of some, some of the important information, right? You've got the decibel for your signal levels. You've got the percentage coverage. So if you had a little wave signal here, you would be able to see the percentage coverage for what's going on there. Um, and then just keep kind of going this direction. You can see a little bit more information out here for the different, uh, different signals that I've got. So WaveMon is telling me a lot of information. So I've also got channel numbers for what channels people are using for their Wi-Fi. So used to it was channels 1 through 11 and you would see tons of overlap at channel 6 because every Wi-Fi router on the planet came out and was defaulted to channel 6. If you noticed that your Wi-Fi router was also set to channel 6 you could go move to channel 10 or channel 3 um, and there's some tools out there that show you like overlapping waves that kinda say here's the spectrum and here's the empty spots. And you might go set your Wi-Fi channel to one of those more empty spots like channel 4 and suddenly you had a much better connectivity, a much better signal because you didn't have all that interference from all of the other Wi-Fi hotspots in your neighborhood because these will create interference with each other because they're running on the same channels. So you can look down through here and see like, okay, who goes on the same or similar channels to me? How many are there? And if there's a bunch, you might say, you know what, I need to move channels. So you need to get into your Wi-Fi router and change those settings and that may help improve your Wi-Fi setup. So there's quite a bit of information you can see here in the scan view as well. So I'm going to go back to F1 here. And you don't have to go back to F1 to get to options. But I want to show you some of the options that they have in this uh, WaveMon as well. All right. So if we go to F7, you can see that's our preferences. So we're going to hit F7. And there's a few things here that you can adjust or change. So you just use the up and down arrow keys to move. So once you highlight something, you use the left and right arrow keys to change those values. Now, I only have one wireless card, so I can't change the wireless card value. And WaveMon is for wireless, so it's going to stay on this interface. So client style MAC address, I can turn that on if I want to, or I can turn it off. 
Um, so scan sort type. So if you want to see the list sorted by channel number, or if you want to see the list sorted by signal strength, or you want to see the list sorted by other things, you can kind of scroll through here and see what kind of sorting it will do. So right now it's doing channel and signal. But I can move that and I can go to open networks and signal. So I can look just at open networks if there's any. And I can look at channel only and I can look at signal only. And then of course I can move MAC address and so on and so forth. So I, you can change this up to how it sorts in that grid that we were just looking at. So you can say scan the sort in ascending order, which basically means show me the lowest values first. Now if you're looking at signal or channel, you're probably wanting to see the strongest signals at the top, so you want to leave that off. If you change it to on, it's going to show you the weakest signals. Um, now you may have to do that if you get far enough from your Wi-Fi router that you're wanting to see where is it at in the list. You may have to switch this to on to get to it because you notice there's no scrolling on that other screen. But you can make the window as big as your screen is high. That makes it a lot easier to see everything. So here's your statistics updates every 100 milliseconds, so basically 10 times a second. Um, you can change this again to be something else. You can just type in a different number. You can make this every half second. You can type in a thousand for every second and so on. So just kind of know that that's there. I just leave it on the default. It seems to update really, really well and give me the information I'm looking for pretty quickly. Um, the histogram update cycles is four level meter smoothness so I just leave this I haven't messed with it you can mess with this number if you want to to kind of see what it does we've got the dynamic information updates and I just leave that alone I haven't messed with it as well so override the scaling and, and I haven't done that I just leave it off low threshold I leave that alone and this last one I also leave alone so I just haven't messed with any of these bottom things, but you've got a few good things up here that you can change to improve what you're what you're trying to look for with WaveMon. And then on startup, you can change so that it goes to either the info screen, which is F1, the scan window, which is your F3, and your histogram, which is F2. I'm just going to leave it on info screen. I like to come to that screen first when I run this, just to kind of see what's going on with my own network. Once you're done, you move down to save configuration with the arrow key, and then hit enter, and it'll save the configuration. And then when you're done with that, you can go back to F1 and see what changes have made, or F3 if you made changes on that view. So it's going to do a scan here again for us, and we'll see all of the networks come up. I didn't really change the sort order or anything, uh, but we can. So we can jump back over to F7. Let's just look at open here. We'll hit save config, and then we'll go back to F1. Real quick here, yes, it's updating. We'll go back to F3. So here you can see kind of towards the top, the things that show to be open-based security networks. That's probably not a great thing, but I don't think I actually have any in my neighborhood that are open, so it's probably just kind of sorting however it, however it happens to grab the information. Um, but if there was any open, then they would be showing up at the top. All right, we'll go back up here. Let's do it by ESSID. We'll save and we'll go back to F3. So there we go. So now we've got the SSID set up first and it's going to show us those things in reverse order basically. So you can see you can change up those settings and see some different information. I'm going to go back to F7. I'm going to change that one more time just back to the original values. There we go. So that's WaveMon in a nutshell. It's a really great tool. It's very simple to use, very straightforward. I've got one more that I want to show you. So we're going to just hit Q. Anytime you have in curses running, you can just hit Q and it goes out of it. So if you remember the tool I showed you before, InMon, it's also an in curses based tool. So when you start it, then you get these different options. And you can do network and CPU and uh, disk and kind of see what's going on in your system. And then once you're done with that stuff, you just hit Q to quit out of it. All right, so the other one I want to show you is the uh, Network Monitor CLI tool. So you have a network monitor built in if you have a graphical user interface normally. And it's down here, and you can kind of go to it and see some different information. But a lot of times it's not super helpful when you're looking for things that are outside of your own network. You can see that there are other networks. So if I click here and I say select network, 
I can see you know a few networks listed here and I can kind of see what the signal strength looks like you know vaguely uh, but it's not a lot of information so there's a tool called NMCLI so network monitor CLI so it's NMCLI and then you have a few options that you can run to basically get some information about those networks so with NMCLI we can give it an option of D and then we're going to basically say Wi-Fi so this is NMCLI we want to see all of the Wi-Fi networks and you can kind of see what happens here so this is just a basic application this is not an in curses application but you can see that you've got the signal strength bars over here on the right and it shows you how strong these networks are it shows you the level of security that it detected on those networks and then over on the left you've got the SSIDs for those networks and then you've got channel numbers and you've got information about what it detected to be the rates for those networks as it's gone through. So your system's always scanning Wi-Fi. Even though you're connected to a single network, it's always looking at other networks just in case. So it gets this information and basically you can pull this up with NMCLI. Now you can hit Q again to kind of break out of that if you don't want to scroll down and see all the information. And we can do NMCLI, D, Wi-Fi, and I think rescan. And then we just run the same thing we did a while ago. So basically we just told it rescan all of the Wi-Fi information and let's see it again. So once you've got that information on the screen then you can just arrow down to see what's going on and you can kind of see all of the networks. So if you're not seeing your network don't forget to scroll down. It could be down here in the lower part of the list because you're too far away from your router. And again that comes back to using some of those other tools like Wavemon to figure out what's going on, what's happening. But here you can look at the channels and you can see like how many other people are on the same channels that I'm using. And if there's a lot, then it might be time to switch channels. So you can kind of see there's different channel information that you get for each one of those SSIDs. So there's a couple of tools to help you with Wi-Fi troubleshooting, trying to figure out what's the best setup for your Wi-Fi and to give you a little bit better um, capability in your home if you haven't done that already. And especially if you're working from home these days and needing some good connectivity. I hope this helps you out. If you liked it, like, subscribe, and let your friends know about it, and I'll talk to you next time.